Hey guys, Nick here. One of the interesting aspects of having a digital wallet installed in our browsers, such as MetaMask, is the fact that our digital wallet has access to our private key. This private key is normally used to sign transactions, call into smart contracts, and more generally just interact with the blockchain. But one other aspect that we can use is this idea of signing arbitrary pieces of data. By signing arbitrary pieces of data, say just like a string or a message, we're able to then use that signature and provide it to other folks, other applications, and they can use that signature to prove that we are in control of that said private key. So we can kind of use this as an authentication mechanism within web applications, almost in lieu of a password. So we can kind of use this as a, as a level of authentication with, within dApps. Now, there are a bunch of different standards emerging in this space about how really what data we actually are signing. And some of you guys have, that have used dApps in the past, you may have seen certain applications prompt you with a signature request to sign just arbitrary hexadecimal data, and you really don't even know what you're signing. Uh, but some applications go a step further and you can see the string that you're signing. Um, and we're even going a step further and we're signing what's called structured data. We'll talk about that in a minute. But in this screencast, what I'd like to do is show you how you can write the code in order to sign a message or prompt the digital wallet to actually get the user to sign a message and then take that signature and verify that the signature is of the, the address that it's stating it came from. So this could be super useful for just providing a, a layer of security within your dApp. So let's go ahead. I'm in, I'm in Stackstarter right now, and we're still working on our basic front-end dApp here with a couple of buttons here. Uh, we kind of took you through a bunch of the core aspects of working on the front-end with the Ethereum blockchain. We are using Ethers.js, the Ethers.js library, in order to interact and kind of provide a nice abstraction layer for us to interact with the various APIs that are available to us. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and add a button that requests a signature. Now the type of signature that we're going to use in this screencast is going to be a super simple signature. So you're just going to see a simple message in your wallet requesting you to sign it. We're going to follow this EIP191 standard when we're doing this, which is already implemented in the Ethers.js library. So we can go ahead and just kind of leverage this standard by just simply using Ethers.js. We'll talk a little bit about of the emerging standards later on as we go in and actually start to develop this. So let's dive right in. So I'm going to open up our editor here and let's get into our, let me, I'll close this out and reopen it here. Let's get into our main.js file. And in our main.js file, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add another function here. So we're kind of just stacking functions in this file right now just to kind of serve as a good reference point for you and, and kind of just a practice for all of us to, uh, to learn this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and add a new function here. We're going to call it, let's call it simple signature. Okay, because so, this is going to be a simple signature. It's following that EIP 191, which is just signing some some simple uh, text. So we'll make this an async function. And there we go. So we have a new function here. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to get the actual signer. So the signer is really an abstraction of our wallet itself in Ethers JS. So we could do this really simply by just saying const signer equals provider, which we already have our provider. We set that up on the when we when we loaded the page, which is an, kind of an, a, an API exposed to us from Ethers.js, which we extracted from the, the window Ethereum object that MetaMask injects into our page. And we're gonna say, get signer. That's gonna go ahead and return an object that we can use kind of in, that makes it feel like it's the wallet. So we could do things like sign messages. So now, Let's go ahead and define a message to sign. So I'm going to say let message equal. Uh, let's let's sign something like we are learning about developing applications for web web three together. Awesome. So that's the message we're going to sign. Now, in order to actually get a signature here, 
it's super simple. We're going to say let signature equals, and this is going to be an async function. So we're going to go and go ahead and await that. And we're going to say signer dot sign message. And we're going to pass in as a parameter the message. So what this is going to do is this is going to interact with our wallet. So we're going to see a prompt in MetaMask that allows us to go ahead and actually sign the message. Let me just make sure that I am in here. I'm going to go ahead and switch to Gorelli and make sure we're on the test nets. And let's go ahead and we can actually run this right now, but we can't run it just yet, right? We need to do something else, right? We need to actually call this bad boy. Um, we need to call it, but also, why don't we do this? Why don't we do a console.log signature so we can see on the console that we have a signature. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and add that button. So I'm gonna go ahead and add open index.html and let's just add a button right to our front end here. I'm just gonna copy one line here and we're gonna make this call simple signature. And we're gonna go ahead and say request signature. Awesome. So now if we go to the front end here, we should have a new button. Let's go ahead and open up our console so that we can actually see what's going on here. Awesome. Now let's go ahead and click request signature. And boom, look at that. So we MetaMask prompted right away that we want to sign this message. We can see the message in in plain English. So we can see, you know, we're signing this message. We're learning about developing app applications for Web3 together. And we have a nice little UI here. So I can go ahead and click sign. And look at that. So our signature did output onto our console and you can see now we have this signature which is this big hexadecimal value but the cool thing about this is we can now use this signature and you and, and internally there's some really interesting cryptography going on it has to do with this idea of elliptic curb cryptography which is an amazing topic that I would recommend. Uh, there's a ton of great resources to read about it. I will link one of these up in uh, in the in the notes below. This one, um, my individual name's Fang Pen. Um, excellent write-up regarding elliptic curve cryptography and all of the interesting mathematics behind it. Um, a lot of what we're doing in blockchain is built on these core concepts. So definitely worth a read here. But using this uh, amazing mathematics and cryptography, we're able to take this signature and derive the actual public address that signed it. So how do we do that? So luckily, Ethers.js makes it pretty easy for us. So Ethers.js, we use this, this method here, sign message, which automatically follows this EIP-191, which prefixes the message with the required Ethereum sign message, and it kind of packages that up really nicely for us in a single call. Now, as you may um, assume here that we can do another call called verify message to verify the message. Now, we don't have to actually verify the message on the front end. We could actually take this, this, this signature and send it off to a smart contract, and we can actually do signature ver verification on chain within a smart contract. And I hope to be able to create some some of these uh, smart contract uh, tracks here on this YouTube channel in the future where we can do a little bit more backend development and we'll probably explore that as well. But for now, let's go ahead and just try to verify the signature and see that it does in fact derive the correct public address, which we can verify. So let's jump back into our JavaScript. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that a verify message method to go ahead and extract that public public address. So I'm gonna say let address equals, I'm gonna use ethers, and we're gonna say utils. So this is in the ethers.utils API. And we're gonna say verify message. And we're gonna pass it two parameters. We're gonna pass it the message that we actually signed and the signature which we derived above. Awesome. So there's the address. Now, if we go ahead and console.log this address, and then also console.log the 
accounts array, the first index in that array, which is the, the current account that we're using, we should see that they match. And we can go ahead and put a conditional statement in there and actually verify that. But let's go ahead and just see that in the console itself. So I'll go ahead and refresh this. I'm gonna click request signature. We'll sign this bad boy. And then boom, look at that. They are, ex well, they're not exactly the same because the cases are a little different. So if we are gonna, we are gonna put this in a, a conditional statement, we're gonna maybe convert this to uppercase and then compare them. But you can see that the addresses match. So we have derived the public address from a signed signature that we signed with our with our private address using our digital wallet MetaMask in our browser. So this is a super useful way to provide a, a bit more security to your dApps. Um, and you, you can see this happening in a lot of dApps today. For example, I think Foundation, the popular NFT platform, does this as well. When you connect your wallet to their service, they also prompt with a signature request using the same simple signature method. So we can we can kind of we can kind of further you know validate this by putting maybe a conditional statement in here and say things like hey if the address maybe that two uppercase um, equal 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 accounts sub zero dot two uppercase right and uh, then we could say console dot log you know. You own this address, All right? And then maybe down here we could say else console.log doesn't look like you own this address, All right? And now instead of console and that, we can go ahead and just console this. And let's see if that works. Request the signature, sign it, and boom. You own this address. Excellent. So that seems to be working. Now, quick note, that is a simple signature method. It's, it's following this EIP-191. There is an emerging standard here called EIP-712. Um, this is, there's some, there's some good arguments here why this is a better method. There's a lot of debate in the community as, as to whether or not this is kind of overly complicated. Um, and I did implement it and, and played around with it a bit and possibly I'll create a video in the future if, if folks want to see it. But um, the, the actual data that you're signing is a bit more structured. So instead of signing just a simple little string like we did here, right? We just put, we're basically signing just this string. There is more of a structure to the data. So there's, you actually use kind of like a JSON data structure and that structure needs to follow a very specific um, structure here. So you put like domain information in there. Let's see if this actually has a, yeah, so you can see here like there's specific information that you're putting in here. I think really the core goal here is to make sure that folks are signing what they think they're signing, right? You wouldn't sign a contract without reading it or something like that, right? That's not that's not a good move. Um, so you know, and also there are there are a bit of security concerns with signing the same piece of of data because if you if you get this signature here and this is all we signed and say my web application uses this message and your web application does, if somebody gets this signature, they can essentially use it for both applications. Um, it's like, it's kind of like the same of using the same password for multiple applications. So there's some considerations here, but this is um, this is definitely a, a good, a better, better than not doing it, I believe. Um, and also MetaMask here, and I'll, I'll link this all in the show notes below, but MetaMask also has some information on some of the methods within the actual Ethereum object that gets injected directly into the browser. So some of the things we did in earlier videos, uh, you could see here that this is kind of the history here, and there's been multiple versions of this signed typed data. Um, and I think currently it's on version four, um, but I believe, I believe they're recommending that, I think they're recommending the, yeah, version three for now, I believe. Um, but yeah, this is, um, this is kind of an emerging spec right now. So uh, yeah, that's how you sign messages using Ethers.js on the front end, and that's how you verify them using a simple signature method. 
Any questions, or if you guys wanna play along with this, I'll go ahead and have a spin code in the description below. Um, if you wanna see more, more videos like this, please leave a comment. Let me know uh, what you guys are looking to do. I'm hoping to do a series on smart contract development. We have a lot of content developed. I just need to kind of chop it up and post it. All right, guys, have fun. Thanks.